the secret to these vertical motion problems will be uh i'll, I'll kind of lay some stuff out because of the kind that we'll be looking at um so it's going to be a little bit lengthy and go over a little things we've done the, all of this stuff before but it'll be all from right in a sense of answering these problems so i would like to just set some things up and then uh give you kind of a, like a, a key or a way to think and then as we answer this type of problem so let's go let's start first off with this silly ladder that i've come up with right so there's the top rung the middle rung and the third rung so up here let's go to semester one on the left semester one is the top function and that is our position function and we know that uh our washington monument is in feet so our position function is negative 16 t squared plus initial velocity times time plus initial position now remember we're in semester one so i'm going to drop down the ladder i'm going to take the derivative so i'm going to take the derivative of position that is velocity that is speed the speed the velocity function i should say is negative 32 t plus initial velocity and then i'm going to take its derivative because obviously s sub zero initial position was a constant its derivative is zero so now i'm going to take the derivative of velocity which is acceleration so the derivative of negative 32 t is negative 32 and the derivative of the constant initial velocity is zero all right as a whole semester one why are we even doing it well let's look on the other side now so semester two Let's go ahead and climb up the ladder. So let's start at the bottom. So my acceleration function is negative 32 feet per second per second in, in uh, uh, feet, feet per second per second. Then integrate that. Now this is where we want to pay attention. So using our power rule, uh, we're going up. So the one acceleration's integral is velocity. So that becomes negative 32t plus c. Okay, so now it's time to focus and look at the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So velocity, velocity, function. Negative 32t, negative 32t. Plus initial velocity, plus c. So when we integrated, we got that constant of integration. So what could we assume that that constant of integration represents? I say it slower and louder. Ready? You see it? Right. So on the left hand side, highlighter, velocity function, velocity function. Those two functions are equal. Negative 32t, negative 32t. Those components are accounted for. Initial velocity plus constant. So what must plus constant be? Initial velocity. So we can go ahead and write that as initial I mean, velocity function is negative 32t plus initial velocity. So let's go and integrate that. So we're going to add one to the power, divide by the new power, since it's a polynomial. So my position function is negative 16t squared, because I added one and divided. Then my initial velocity times a power increased, so it's power one, plus my constant of integration. So I'll just highlight the only one we're talking about here. Uh, both of these are accounted for. Now I want to look at S sub O, which means my initial position, and I have this constant of integration. So without any, I don't have to ask the class. That constant of integration must represent the initial position. S sub O, initial position. So the beginning, the position at time zero. 
Initial velocity is the velocity at time zero. What was its speed when we started counting? So this right here, um, something to keep in mind as we work through the problem. So really, that's a, that's a, a refresher of, of everything we've been doing, but we're just going to put it in context of this problem. Now, let's bring back the problem that we're going to do. So, um, the problem from the book 69 is with what initial velocity? So our question what we're trying to solve for is initial velocity. That's what we want. We want the initial velocity. So V sub O. It's called initial velocity. You write it as V sub O. We want that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, with what initial velocity must an object be thrown upward from ground level to reach the top of wa the Washington Monument, which is approximately 500 feet? So 550 feet. Probably is probably a offense you could be arrested for, but let's, let's not discuss that. All right, so here we go. So, so there they are, and I I, I want to draw the little flags around it in a circle, but we don't have time. So our vertical motion problem. Uh, vertical motion problems are always what shape? Are they cubic snakes? Are they straight lines? Or are they parabolas? One more time, here's my position function. My position function, where an object is located, free fall in space, it's a parabola, right? I saw that, that was well done. That was, that was a, yeah, like a basketball, right? So, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a parabola. So let's go ahead and, and motion this object. So here's the object. Uh, it's going to be looking like that. That's the object. And it's going to be thrown. It's going to come up. Let's just call it making the same height as the Washington Monument. So for it to have the same height as the Washington Monument, it needs to reach a height of 550 feet. So, like just thinking about this slow and steady, everything slow and steady, that position function needs to have um, its vertex at a minimum of 550 feet. So that means um, so I'm sorry, I'm distracted by all right, so um, whatever's going on in front of me, can you just not do it because it's like just stay on the yeah because it's distracting me. So, um, so that that vertex has to be if if you want it to reach there, the the lowest point the vertex can be is five hundred and fifty feet. Because if the vertex were any lower, it wouldn't reach it because that's the top of the parabola. It could go up higher, could be, but for it to reach that, now let's look at that line. I actually meant that line to to measure the the the, the heights of the parabola and the and the monument. But let's pretend that line were a tangent line. Because we know, we know at the top of any uh, parabola or, you know, a derivative, like the slopes of the tangents right there are zero. Okay, so let me uh, ask you the question. The green function, what is the green function? Is that position, velocity, or acceleration? The parabola. Is it the object's position? Yes, it's the object's position. So let's go up to the ladder. So the derivative of the position is the velocity function. So the time at which uh, the speed of the object. So the slope of the tangent on velocity at the top is zero. So at some point, we know, we know at this point, we know velocity function will be equal to zero there. Okay, because this problem gets a little bit harder than 67 because you've actually got numbers in 67 that you can work out. In 69, you do not have numbers. So they're the same concept. Just so, 
So we know that at the top there, the velocity would be equal to zero. We also know velocity is a vector. We know that if objects are traveling up, they have speed and positive direction. If objects are traveling down, that vector has the same exact speed, except it's traveling in a negative direction. So the, the sign, the plus or minus, just the direction is changing. You could be flying at 450 knots or you could be flying at negative 450 knots. Just depends which direction you're going. So, um, so now between positive and negative velocity, positive tangents and negative tangents, right? So here's my positive tangents. There's my velocity being positive and my velocity being negative. Between those, there's a zero. So that is all going to come in useful information as we do this problem. So I'm trying to find out the initial velocity needed when uh, to get an object to the top of the tower. So let's go and try and do that. So let's go up the ladder. So let's do the math now and let's not get lost along the way because it, it's easy to get lost, all right? Because we're used to plugging in initial velocity, right? And I did the same thing myself. Um, so it's it's... So we know that acceleration due to gravity given in feet is negative 32. So we know velocity is the integral of acceleration. So we know, not dx, dt, we know that that function is going to be negative 32 um, t plus the constant of integration. And based on our findings above, the constant of integration is initial velocity. So we are trying to find the initial velocity. There it is. So we now at least have an item we can go and we have a, a target to go after. So now what are we supposed to do with that? Well, that gets confusing because now how am I supposed to get to it? Um, if you plug in zero, uh, it, it doesn't, doesn't help you. Nothing helps you. What you do know is the velocity function at the time of the vertex is equal to zero. So let's set, let's set the velocity function equal to zero and find the time that that happens. So here we go. So negative 32t plus initial velocity. I don't know what happened to my t there. It looks like equals zero. Subtract uh, initial velocity. Divide by negative 32. That is the time it happens, which would be commonly known as a positive. So keeping the big picture in mind here, what we found is the time of the vertex. The time of the vertex has been written as a function of initial velocity. So what we found right here is we just solved for this time that the vertex is at its maximum. But we've solved it not as a number. We've solved it as a function of an input, and that input is initial velocity. So how are we going to find an answer to the initial velocity? Well, we do have to use our algebra to find a system of equations. We need another equation to plug it into. But what I do know is my other equation here is this point. This, po this point right here in space, it also has a position function associated with it. And we know the height at that time, it's 550. So let's go up the ladder one more time from velocity to position. So let's go up the ladder so we know, we know the integral, uh, our position function is equal to the integral of my velocity, negative 32 t plus initial velocity with respect to time. So I'm finding my position function so I can plug that time into it. So let's go ahead and do that. So that becomes 
negative 30, no, negative 16 t squared, because I divide by the two, plus initial velocity times time, plus initial position. In the practice problem that I'm going to give you to do, your initial position won't be zero. But in our problem, it is zero because we are throwing the object from the ground. We're projecting it up from the ground over up to the height of the monument. So the initial position of my object is zero. So our function is um, S of t is equal to negative 16 t squared plus initial velocity times plus zero. So we don't need to write that. Now, we've got the position function. So let's go back to our diagram and look at it very quickly. So I have, now let's go to a different color of marker. I have, I have a position, 550 feet, at the time t. I know that at the time t, it's going to be at the maximum. So I have to plug that time t into my position function and set it equal to 550 to solve that. So let's go see what I'm talking about. So let's go in and uh, let's do it in green. So now I know the position of the top is 550. That is equal to negative 16 times input squared plus initial velocity times input. And I solved for my time as a function of initial velocity. So I'm going to plug that in. So now I plug that in. So initial velocity over 32, initial velocity over 32. At this point, I'm not fussed about whether you square that and show me the big numbers, 32 squared on the bottom. I don't really mind. Why don't we all just take calculators right now, make sure we can get that in the calculator. What you will do is you will graph. Um, you are not graphing the position. You are not graphing that. You are graphing um, this function. This function is now a quadratic facing up, but let's see about why that is. Because your input, you can't, you cannot put, you cannot put initial velocity in your calculator. What you can put in your calculator is X. So replace those with X's. And then what happens is this number is bigger than this number. Therefore, it becomes a parabola upside. Now, I suggest, this is the way I suggest you use your calculator. I suggest you set, I suggest you set the, the y height, the, the, the number you're trying to equal to, I suggest you set the y-axis to 600. Um, I don't know how far out this axis is going to go. So let's put just 500 and C, right? Um, and if it doesn't show up, then you have to play find your find your curve. But I suggest you put both curves into the equation and then read and then read where they meet. And you can do that by calculating the intersection under your calculate menu. Okay, so we should all get the same answer. Let's see if we can do it. Keep going. I'm going to put it up on the board so you know if you've got the right answer or not.
to get that number. Nods. Shown in your second equation, you see your second equation of flight friction. And then you find out what that is. Okay. <laughs> in fact, calculate a question for in a minute. Most people are so. Yeah, that's good. Most people are doing bobbleheads. We'll fix the calculated questions if you have them because you don't want. This is a complicated problem. You don't want calculator operations slowing you down. So let's just look at this one more time because you're going to do one for yourself. And remember the percentage of people that uh, get it right. Um, all right. So just using um, the concept of position, velocity, and acceleration, looking at it, both left and right of the, the ladder there, we realize our constant of inter integration is initial velocity and initial position as we climb up the ladder respectively. So we've got a diagram of, of what's going on, We're kind of figuring out, we read the problem, there'll be a book, book problem. You're trying to get to a height of, and, for, and we know uh, vertical motion problems follow a parabolic shape. So we kind of sketched everything out and we know that um, initial velocity is part of the position function. We know it has a maximum. We know the tangent line at the maximum is zero. We used our calculus to build the velocity and the position functions. And we also, uh, we didn't know what time the maximum happens. So what we did was we found the time the maximum happens by setting the derivative equal to zero, the velocity equal to zero, position's derivative. And the reason we did that is because there's a flat tangent there. And we know that's a guaranteed point because the, the here, if I were to, if I were to graph the, um, if I were to graph the velocity function, it's going to look like, Oh, it was negative 32t, isn't it? It's negative 32t. It's going to be that, right? So it's going to it's going to have a zero right there, and that, that zero represents that, right? But we're not looking. But the point is, this is an this is a point t um, zero. So we figured out what t that was, and we figured that t happened to be initial velocity divided by 32. But that still hasn't solved us our problem. We need to find out what that initial velocity is. So somehow we not, we need another function that we can plug t into and solve for initial velocity. So funny enough, we have one. We have position. And we know position. Position in space is 550 feet at time t. So we found our position function. We set it equal to 550. And we plugged our value of t in. Um, and then we used a calculator to find that intersection. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, we don't have to use quadratic formula or anything silly like that. Um, and that's it. All right. So I'm going to have you do, uh, uh, let's use a real pen. Let's do page, um, 257. Your problem will be number... 74. The only thing different is this is in meters and your S sub O initial position is not zero. All right, so you'll have to think about those things. All right, any questions for the goods that I can put on the video? Okie doke. All right, get started with that and I'll come around and check you.